Hi folks, we'll get started in a couple of minutes. If you can add your name and any agenda items to the meeting notes, we appreciate it. All right. Well, um, let's see. I'm going to open my screen. Does anyone have any agenda items to add that they haven't already added? Verbally call it out. Uh, can y'all hear me? I may have knocked my audio out. No, no, oh, we can't hear. Oh, we can right. hear you, Taylor. I hit so, the Bluetooth and I hit something else. I thought it went away. All right. Does anyone have anything for today? Uh, probably one of the things that I want just to, to mention uh, during the KubeCon uh, was uh, at least I heard multiple times 
this TVO um, documentation system. So I don't know, it's like, we should just take a look of uh, some of the things that we can take from that system and implement in, in this working group. Uh, so seems like um, some of the projects are using it. Um, especially just to, to improve the, the way that we document the, or a structure of documentation. All right. Uh, anything else? Does anyone have anything else? Hi, Tom. Hello. I have got a question, although I don't know if it's been covered elsewhere, which is um, what the next steps are for the CNF certification. So do we need to sort of do any work to get people involved? Um, or is there any early feedback from people sort of trying it out or anything? All right. Tom. Okay, so I'll jump in then. Um, the co-chair nominations are officially still open. We haven't had many, we ha only have a few responses. Um, I've asked, we wanna do uh, voting on the folks that have, come in even though there's only a few there and last time that was Bill Mulligan who set that up so I've asked him to show us what he did otherwise we'll set something up somewhere to go through the voting but if if you want to put your name in or know someone who might want to recommend someone and reach out to him ask him to put their name in to the mailing list and we'll probably do votes, have them ready uh, by next Monday so that everyone can go in and, and do that process. Uh, if you haven't taken the, the survey, please take this TOCO Focus micro survey so that CNCF can get feedback, pass it out. We wanna get as, much feedback to CNCF as possible so they're hearing what's important. All right, um, let's see. This week, I guess is a, I think it, Elef, there's a LFN conference that's going this week and next week is Open Source Summit. So if folks know of any good talks happening this week or next week, then please, add them to the document so that we can reference them and other people can see it. All right, Victor, tell us about Divio. You want to have the screen share? Uh, well, I didn't have any, uh, I mean, um, prepared, like I just heard like at least twice in, in doing the KubeCon. So it seems like, um, it's a new way to structure the documentation. Um, basically, provides few um, best practices and divide depending on the, the audience or like what are you trying to um, to, to explain. So in this case, is uh, depending on the audience, you can provide like tutorials, reference, or like, and for example, for tutorials are like very specific, just a step by step guide or things like uh, the documentation is written. Um, so as in general, like uh, this system tries to um, structure the documentation in four different categories for better understanding and, and, and I use it. So, so for, for certain things, like I provide a few recommendations uh, like as I said before, like tutorials are like very um, 
very um, specific um, set of uh, steps to, to, to provide. I know that in our case, we are not providing tutorials or things like that, but um, yeah, maybe for other things like, uh, I don't know, how to guide or maybe explanations. So we can take view of the recommendations that are making this, this system. So, so an, another uh, session that I attended in the QCon was the, 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 the presenter was explaining a few of the other recommendations were not specific about this Debo system, um, but he was also providing some, some suggestions in the way that document things. I can look for um, my notes and try to see if I can um, think uh, or find or, or what was the, the session or what was recorded. But uh, at least this Debo system was mentioned in multiple uh, sessions in the keep going. Does it, I'm, I'm trying to, there's no, here's how to get started that I'm saying. Um, and I'm wondering, it, like, are we going to write in Markdown as it's? Uh... No, well, this is more like the content, uh, how the content has to be structured. Uh, I think that with the start is like the video that you <laughs> didn't uh, uh, play it, but uh, it's, it's a good summary, like what he, he was trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the rest of the things like the tools that you use like markdown or like i think that there is another you markdown like markdown docs or mark mark docs or i don't know something like that um yeah it's it doesn't matter in this case this is more like the way that documentation the documentation or the content of the documentation has to be in structure So, so I just think that so I, we deserve I, to take a look. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. I mean, we've kind of thrown some stuff together with regards to uh, some of the structure, like the I, um, this where we wanted to put practices. You know, there's not much here right now, but um, I think Robbie was been, uh, originally put this in. Sounds good to maybe talk about a little bit of the structure mm -hmm. as we're moving forward. It might be relevant also for Tom's question as far as like what's next and related to the certification and, and stuff like that. Um, use cases and user stories, we ran into some times where like uh, this one was this is a combination of use cases and user stories, short versions of each versus uh, the use case. We had some very specific ones and then some that are more extensive. So that could kind of tie in with where do you find these things? This probably should all be under the doc directory anyways, but as we add more content, it's gonna be harder to find and where, to, where can people contribute? If, if you can maybe post some more links in here regarding where the examples and stuff that we can look at and how to get started and so that we can think about how it would directly apply to the CNF working group info. Yep, yep, I can, I can do that. I, I mean, I, I would just, at least I start like with the, the video and the video is the explanation of the, the author of this system where he, it's a, it's a quick, a quick uh, video where like he explains all the, the, the goals and all the things. It's, it's a good start, like I think, but yeah, I can I can provide that difference like that um, analysis as well.
Uh, Taylor, it seems like you are on mute. Oh, I guess I am on mute. Um, yes, that sounds great, Victor. So, yeah, any anything you provide around it, <clears throat> including if you have ideas, like an example skeleton of here's some ways that it could be applied for use cases and user stories or the best practice or whatever you're thinking um, so that we have some ideas there and that might some of the organization if we can get this and if it's it may be helpful to for people that want to contribute but don't know how to get started all right Tom. hey uh Oh, I was going to chime in. Yeah, go ahead, Eric. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hey, Victor, Tom, uh, others. This is my first time attending. Uh, nice to connect with some of you. Um, I guess to Victor's point around documentation and uh, uh, and uh, your comments around increasing visibility, if it will, for uh, use cases and uh, uh, the, the growing complexity that we foresee, a lot of these documentation sites, there is usually some static generator where much like that Divio site, there's a, a website that is generated from the repo. Um, is there something, okay, is, there, or, 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 is there something similar being done with the repo today? Because that might be one way to kind of leverage uh, as documentation grows and uh, uh, complexity increases around it and we start to leverage things like the, the, these best practices for documentation um, that, that would make it more uh, accessible and human readable rather than trying to navigate like a, a repo. I, I think there's a balance that we got to have with the Kubernetes and CNCF community on folks that like to work out of a repo and the markdown and everything, and then people that are happy to have the external and the people willing to maintain either or both. But I think, I'm, uh -huh. I'm, you know, we've talked about having something that could generate. Um, I don't know how to get over the Anakit docs, Tom, but uh, let's see. What's the best way? Anakit. Go ahead, Ariel. Yeah, it, it's um, cntt.readthedocs.org. There you go. Right. It, and I believe some of those things are triggered, like you, you wouldn't have to write twice, right? The idea is that you're taking the same content and just publishing it to different uh, places. So uh, I believe, I forget what we used to use in the past, but uh, it, it could be triggered on a commit to or a merge into the, the, the master branch where it would automatically generate the yeah, uh, an update. It, exactly. So, so, so these ones, the Anarchid docs are done um, using read the docs, the, the SAS platform. Um, I, I know other projects use GitHub pages, so we wouldn't even need to do any kind of work with um, with read the docs or the Sphinx build process or anything. We'd just turn on GitHub pages within our repo, um, choose the, the path that we want to have built in that static way. And then, like, as you say, Ariel, it's just, you know, we, we change content. It's reflected in the HTML within a minute. Um, the Cloud Native Principles site, this networking Cloud Native Principles, mm -hmm. org, it's using uh, Gitbook, which is a similar. So you, you're you going to put everything in GitHub and it automatically, any updates or commits are gonna generate it. So totally down for that if we can make it simple. I think the big thing is what are people willing to do? Um, I'm not personally wanting to switch over to a completely different language separate from Markdown, mm -hmm. like a markup language. Like I, I don't wanna start writing I don't, I don't know, I don't, whatever it would be. RSP or something. Yeah, RSP, put it right in XML, that's gonna generate it that way. Uh -huh. 
I mean, if someone else wants to write it all and convert it, then I'm willing to add content to it. But I, I probably wouldn't be down for being a part of the conversion myself. But if it's something that we can keep, we can just make some modifications. I believe in the past, I don't know what the current is, Tom. In the past, there was, it wasn't completely compatible with, with standard markdown. And there was quite a bit of problems with some, some things. But the CNF working group already has um, a lot of uh, pre com pre merge test for markdown so we're pretty good on that side so i think that yeah. pretty pretty much any system that builds off of markdown we would have a good base for yeah yeah but uh, so with with the with the read the docs thing because it uses sphinx it expects standard markdown github has its own flavor of markdown but github pages which is the kind of GitHub static web hosting thing um, is obviously completely aware of and supports their flavor of Markdown. So I've used both, it, both are fine with the Markdown that we use. Um, I'm, I'm happy to sort of put together an example using GitHub pages just to show how easy it is, if that would help. All right. I think some of the benefit that we get from there is when you talk about uh, some of those things that are maybe uh, uh, like buried away <laughs> or that it's difficult. Uh, I think when, once uh, as we look here at the at the, the table of contents of the navigation is as an end user, when I come here and I'm coming for a specific use case, let's say, or a specific practice or some document, all of a sudden by having the navigation, I get a high level kind of view into what's included here in a way that when I'm just navigating the repo, I may not have that, uh, uh, I may not have that, uh, that mechanism for discovery available in the same way. Yeah. I would argue that I'm okay with that in general. I would argue that it's just a medium though. And it's really how much effort are people going to put into it? Because I can make, it, it kind of forces you is the only thing. Um, these read the docs and get book, it auto generates some of that stuff. So if people aren't creating it, it's going to kind of force you there and it expects you to have a few files named to certain things. But you can do all of those things. Like you can have your front readme have a table of contents and it just pushes you down. It's more of, are you going to make the effort to actually organize your things? Which I think goes back to what Victor is saying as far as being thoughtful about who are your end users and how are they coming in? Right now, the newest Anakit docs looks better than I, I can tell Tom that they've been updated. There, it's it's nicer to come in at this point than it was in the past. Yeah, yeah. Move through you, where you are, and that's not because of the medium. This is a little bit on the being thoughtful about where are they coming in, what may they care about. We're still going to need to do that in the working group. So when you come in here and, you know, how do, how do you get started? What do they want to do? People that are being sent here, what do they want to do? You know, a lot of people don't put stuff here. We don't. Other than you can click the readme, but you can actually put links and stuff here in these. People are going to still make their way to the repo. So I think being thoughtful about, what do the end users care about? We need to do that. And then whatever medium and tools we use, we'll build on that. And don't expect the tools to fix those problems. That'd be my only thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we have to account for consumers versus contributors. I think we all start as consumers and however we can consume the content and structure an organization is definitely a, an important element of that. And, and, uh, the, uh, and also how you consume it, right? The medium uh, is, is 
also important. I think the beauty of what we were talking about with Read the Docs is that we wouldn't have to move away necessarily from like with, with the creation point still lives in uh, and the creator experience still lives in GitHub. Just the consumption is kind of, you know, we're translating the markdown into something that is structurally e and visually easier to consume. Sounds good. I'm, I'm totally down for sending people to a, a and probably not, if we think beyond the just the CNF working group, the going back to what Tom was saying. So the CN certification, where to send people, Tom, is CNCFAO slash CNF. That's where I would start. And really, with regards to this, the certification is just, it's another part of the same goals that we've had. And you and I, Tom, have been talking about for, what, three years now? Yeah, I, sorry, Taylor, I, I don't want to leave you hanging, but I need to drop for my next call, sorry. Oh, um, all right. That, that's cool. I'll, um, yeah, I'll catch up with you. We can, we can follow up about the survey. Yeah. yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, same, same goal. We're trying to make it easy for telecom folks who to adopt cloud native best practices, which really means how do we work in this in cloud environments in a better way rather than using, you know, duct tape or it works, but it's not taking advantage of the fact that you're in a cloud environment. And that's really the idea with all of these things. So if we have a Ariel um, and Victor as well, if we have a place where we can send them for the CNF working group, and I think this would be the same for the CNF test suite, where they can come in and to something like a landing page, the same as what we have for the certification, and they can get started and know how to you know, contribute and what what we're doing and how to work in it, then that sounds like a good idea. One thing that we've done in the past, but haven't done as much lately, would be tying, uh, communicating how the different initiatives work together in a documented fashion. On the calls and these, these calls and presentations and everything else we've talked about it but I think we need to update the docs on the working group the test suite and the certification page to kind of tie them all together make sure people can get between the different areas and see how they how they uh, collaborate Hi, Oliver. Hi, Kent. I don't know where y'all came in. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Ariel, you got anything else? Not right now, thank you. Yeah, nothing to add right now either. Um, I, I did appreciate the conversation though there on the documentation system. So I just, I mean, I didn't share up any views there, um, but I, I, I guess the only thing I would say is I, I, I'm, Plus one for 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 the idea of making end user um, experience, you know, easy because not everyone comes from you know from the the GitLab, Git work, you know, GitHub, um, and that might seem striking as, as a su surprise for some of you. But I think you know, just making the output of what we do easy to consume is a, is a is a good thing. So yeah, just nothing else to add today. Happy to have your help if you have time and are willing. I know you've done a lot on the Anakit side too. The, the other thing that we can also do it, uh, we can touch basically with the glossary team. Uh, they have evolved the the glossary uh, to something more. I, I mean, I know they are translating uh, the terms to multiple languages and providing um, yeah these nice 
website using more tools and things like that. So uh, as you can see now, they have like a eight languages. Um, so, and they have a, this uh, more user-friendly uh, or more consumer um, approach. So, so obviously we can learn a few things from there. Yeah, I, it sounds great. And you can see there, they have markdown for all of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what the system that they're using. I think that they're using Ugo. Uh, the same system that it is using for the Kubernetes website. What is it? Ugo, uh, H-U-G-O. It's a static website generator. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, um, if people, I mean, it sounds like a lot of people are passionate about this. It'd be great if we can come to a decision. We don't have to today, but we can put some ideas up here for the system. I mean, I, I, I do really like the, the glossary too. Um, I know that there's a lot of styling and stuff going on there. We'd probably get some help on the styling side if we don't have any, oh, I was trying to go back. If we don't have anybody that's directly on the call, we could probably reach out to CNCF uh, team that worked on this and maybe able to get some help for something like this if we don't go with something like the read the docs or get books. Maybe get some ideas posted on here and then and talk through those. And then once we select a system, everybody that seems passionate can help us get, get it up and running and get more people in. Anything else on this or any other topic? We only have one last one here, question. But... All right, so um, there's been some requests for a little while about moving the CNF working group back uh, a bit earlier time and so the main idea would be move it back one hour it moved forward when the time changed because we were locked to a utc time 1600 utc so we'd move it to 1500 utc but really what we're saying is it would be 8 a.m Pacific and we just wouldn't change it. It would stay that even with time change. So it'll be um, about the same time of day for everybody rather than this shift. I think for some folks it's five or 6 p.m. In, in Europe and of course some people it's gonna be even later but that would move it back a little bit without being a conflict with other calls except for, I think the telecom user group shift. So we may have to do some adjustments on that one call, but that's only every other month right now. We'll put up a, a doodle poll, I guess, um, but is, is there any, maybe uh, I'm just gonna put 8 a.m. PDT. Want to hear some feedback? Plus ones or no way for folks on the call? My case, I'm okay with this time. So, Akash, Oliver, I'm fine with it. I haven't calculated 
what it means, but yeah, any any is fine. <laughs> Uh, who else? I heard someone else for a moment. Ariel. It's uh, <clears throat> pardon me. It's it's not it's not a big deal on the East Coast, so I'm I'm pretty Central time or Central European time zone friendly in U.S. I don't think we're going to have any more time changes. I believe the law here. Um, we we just went through our final. Uh, time change here in the US. Um, but I, I, I don't know if we're going to switch again or if we're locked into the current time. I know we're getting rid of it. Yeah, I'm fine with it as well, um, Taylor. It's all over. All right. Um, I thought that I hope that they actually switch our time to the other time, Ariel, um, before they lock it. But other than that, not having a time change sounds good. All right. We'll put up a doodle poll, but it, nobody said no. Did you say something, Ken, or somebody else say it? I thought I heard one more voice besides the one that I've heard just now. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. All right. Well, we'll put up a doodle poll. It'll be there. We'll post. Uh, it'll be there for next week, but we'll post it in the channel. Um, we won't switch next week, but maybe the following week we'll get switched. Please do the telco focus micro survey and nominate yourself if you want to be up for voting or tell someone else to do so. Thanks everyone. Well, have a good Bye. day. See you next week. Thank you.